Wonder how much easier this fight would be if you just get lucky and it's all solid ground. Answer a lot. A lot. You can't, the, these two handed cleavers have made such a giant bit of that giant difference. Thank you, my friends. Just got a touch of corona, but I shouldn't joke, it's getting pretty bad. see now prioritizing the freeing of your lads is absolutely the way to go and I thought the witch hut fight was a grind good lord that's not a grind this is a grind very low I would think four or five more tentacles No idea, Hurricane. No idea. I just did a quick uh, patch review, though. Those new weapons look very interesting. And I look forward to fighting in the arena. It's going to be amazing. Oh, so close! What if it's going to give us the stat of how many tentacles we destroyed? As you can see there, that was an, it's an important, important little detail. The fact that you can move freely between the tentacles without them getting attacks of opportunity. It has gotten easier to manage though, because it feels like there's more than four tentacles in the beginning part of the fight. Oh! Can I get even closer? So the bleeding doesn't seem to do dick against the tentacles. It actually attacked. Interesting. I'd love to know what you need to do to get the tentacles to attack rather than constrict. did indeed we had two more lads i think dropping the dogs was worth it it just created a bit of chaos in the beginning my liege good tonight will you come with me to this camelot is very kind thanks mate Uh, recover. So it seems like well, I know that for sure these three squares get you eaten. So I'm guessing it's one, two, three, four, five, six that get you eaten. I just wish I could have got through all of this without having taken those fatalities. I really don't want to grind another brother up from level one just for the Black Monolith fight. Oh, come on! Okay, now we got a problem. Oh, fuck. Rip, Levitzmere. Shit. That's true, Rotter, but the thing is, with the DLC being so close, 
I'm in no mood to do all the offline grinding I would need to do to make another level 11. We will finish this fight, we'll reload it and go do the Black Monolith and then, and then call the campaign and end. It's been a hell of a campaign though. Damage Inc. have so far surpassed my expectations. Come on, this is crazy! Giving FS, it is about the terrain. Like these lads that have a foothold here on the solid ground are doing a lot better, but as we saw there, if someone gets pulled into one of these spots, there's nowhere to go. So actually, getting up here was not what I wanted to do. Also, Goliath has been consistently useless there. Not yet, Hefes. Not that I know of. I'm so bored of this fight. <laughs> it's so long. This is like, I feel like I'm in the Crimson Court in the Darkest Dungeon. Oh my god, come on! I suppose I do, but I, I honestly, uh, I wasn't too bothered by the terrain here. And it's certainly possible to get through the fight without losing anyone, but it's just such a fucking grind. Like how many have we killed? I'll be glad to get the achievement for killing it, but I'm not doing this fight ever again. This 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 can fuck right off. I'm guessing the black mana is not gonna be much better. <laughs> it's just gonna be so many enemies. I was just going to say that I feel like the Polom lads have done the best out of everybody. Oof. And then as soon as someone fails one break free attempt, they are just dead. This reminds me, reminds me of the old Alp fights, where it's just a slow, meticulous grind. From what I understood, Darkest Dungeon 2 is miles away. The, it, was, it wasn't a release announcement, it was just an announcement that it's coming. And that was a few months ago, and I think much has happened. It's not really sort of what's important. Bandalord comes out in a week or two, and I'm off that whole week. I can't wait. To manage my expectations. It's a good question. Like they can't can they even lean into the art style even more? Is it even possible? Ugh. I feel like I've got to go take a nap between the amount of tentacles you gotta kill. I hope it gives us a stat of how many tentacles we killed. Any, any kill now, boys. Uh, unreal. Yeah, I don't intend this episode to be... It's an hour and 19 minutes so far. I should have made this its own episode, or maybe even a two-parter. Well, Hefes, sell an organ, commit a crime, do what you gotta do. That's Ben Lord. The people have literally lived and died waiting for that game to come out. People are gonna live and die waiting for this Kraken to die. Mountain Blade, Ben Lord. It's the Mountain Blade expansion. Well, it's Mountain Blade 2, excuse me. I hope they don't mess it up too much. It's 
crazy how much easier it is when you're able to remove the tentacles every turn. I have one full collection of playlists. I, I'm, I'm guessing you mean of the first Mountain Blade. It can be quite difficult to get into. I struggle to get into it. The graphics are horrendous. It's an ugly old game. But the mechanics are so solid. Okay, this is nuts. How many hit points has this thing got? No, it's not turn based. Real time on the world map, but you can pause it and then. Did you ever play Chivalry or Mordhau? Because then once you go from the world map into the combat map, you then go into that sort of fight. I recommend checking out Koi Fish and Simo, S I M O, on YouTube. They make their videos are meme tastic. Are you having a laugh? Ugh. I also probably have a couple of hundred hours on Warband. Love it. Yeah, it's not polished, but I mean, me mechanically, it is so sound. It's such an awesome game. Come on, boys. Anytime you're ready. Oh, God. This reminds me of the Monty Python skit. Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm bored. It's, what a letdown, huh? What a letdown of a fight. You just have to have the right gear set up, leveled lads, and a shitload of patience. see any hit points mm, I think the mass parks would only be well for the guys who don't have parks a uh, polom specialization I wouldn't agree with that the key thing being that the guys who don't have polom specialization I don't think would be able to use uh, free free ally and attack so the lads on the front line here with the thrust get extra attack accuracy and they can attack past a turn or they can Free themselves from ally and then attack. I can see what difference these spears are making. I think it's a huge difference. Well, we've got two pikes in this playthrough. In this team, I, I should say. <sighs> this thing is unkillable. I feel like I'm playing Dota and this is a highly leveled timber saw with like two, two bloodstones with 20 charges on each bloodstone. But don't get me wrong, that's still an interesting uh, big bad to fight. Like, I can't imagine anyone would be able to kill it first time without knowing all the details of what you have to do. <laughs> not what gonna enough drinking on the weekend thank you such a freaking headache oh this could be it oh we're gonna die here I'm gonna die at my PC This is becoming completely ridiculous. Okay, next one. 
This is the one. Sorry, not Hurricane. If I die, my PC is going to my girlfriend. Oh, come on! Whip you, naughty! Naughty Kraken, die! Come on. Just pay attention. I was going to say, pay attention to which tentacle. Uh, which tentacle is the lowest, but you don't even think about that. You just attack whichever one you can. I feel like assuming I have high accuracy brothers, I think swords would have been better than these spears. I see the swords would have done more damage. The lads are exhausted. Look at this. 54 turns. 54 turns. <sighs> well, you know what, Rotte? If I had my two handed Warhammer lads, we could actually get through that 5000 uh, HP. Uh, 5,000 armor. But we don't. What the ever-living actual steamed fuck? This game is trolling me. Javelins are very good because they're accurate. But you keep on getting lads. You keep on getting tentacles in melee range. And how many tentac- how many javelins do you have to carry? To get through 54 turns, you like if you're throwing, let's say, you won't throw two every turn. You throw one every turn. 54 javelins. Any any throwing guy with even if he had bags and belts would have run out of javelins 26, uh, 29 turns ago. Don't joke. I'm beginning to wonder whether I have to kill two tentacles in one turn to actually finish it off. I gotta be able to do something with this fight to make it more more interesting. Make the head move around, make the head more dangerous. Make the head like fighting make it feel like you're fighting a giant fucking uh lindworm or something. I don't know. I'm guessing we have to kill two tentacles in one turn. That, that's what you have to do, isn't it? Uh, who's that? Zipnon. I would agree, Zipnon. Like, make if you make it more of a dynamic fight, so that instead of just having to stay away from the head, you can engage the head, but you have to, like, maybe stun it. And as long as you stop people from getting eaten, that doesn't regenerate health. Or something like that. Uh... What the fuck? How many tentacles have we killed? Oh no, my mind unraveling so soon. Ugh. 
It's over. It's over, lads. It's over. We paid a price. Rip Bananafant, Rip Nixus, Rip Levitzmere. What the hell is the Rechgeist? Severed tentacle. The shoveling remains of a legendary Kraken's tentacle, slimy and squishy but highly sought after by alchemists for its supposed rare properties. I hope this means I can craft the re-leveling potion so I can re-level Pumulus properly. Take it from the head of the legendary Kraken as large and hard horn plate is a trophy fuel as well can claim. Who's spoiling? No south no, no spoilers, please. You're welcome, dirty. <sighs> Tentacles chained across the swamp in a corrupted mess such that you didn't slay the Kraken so much as annihilate the very place it called home. Each wormy vestige is wimpled with swamp moss, a stretch of profitable farmland to hatch the very mushrooms you saw the woman eating time and time again. You crouch beside one unharvested batch, poking at their caps like a cat at a wingless moth. The fungi deflate at the touch. The same on, a uh, light archer looks at them. My ecologist might know what those are. You nod. Yeah. Might. You move along, crushing the shrooms underfoot and wading through limbs and bloodied cloaks floating along the swamp and the tentacles' faceless heads with their leafy maws folded over each other and their tongues lolled like whips. You find the woman nestled behind a cast of kudzu, yourself parting the vines like a man seeking his fortune. She regards you with a grin. Did you hear it? Did you hear its beauty? Sighing, you tell her that the shrooms overtook her mind. And the shrooms were likely there for a reason, and that the Kraken had her well before it ever rose. That it used her to bring everyone here. Grinning evermore, she only asks again if you heard its beauty. You tell her you heard it die. Her brow furrows. Cry of death? Is that what you think? Oh my, oh no, stranger. That was a cry for help. Don't you get it? That means more out there. More! Perhaps hundreds! And now they are awake. Now they're all awake. You step back and close the kudzu curtain. Samon tells you that the company has found something. For a moment, you think to save this woman, but you know better. You know the grip she is in and you leave her be. All right, show me what you found. The creature was almost too large to die properly on its side and instead tilts forward with its horrid mouth gaping like a hole blasted into a leaning bastion. One cell sword sits cross-legged atop the Kraken's dome like a monk deep in study. Another is poking the creature in its eyes until one pops and the corners of the socket slurp the liquid in a frothy gargle. Blech. You ask the mercenaries what of import has been found and one waves you over to the creature's maw. With slackened gums, the teeth now hang downward, limp crenellations to a tower of horror. The silly of razors coated in clothes and flesh and so large that whole limbs are wedged between them. And so is the blade. You reach into the mouth and wrench out the blade and wipe it down with a cloth. Turning the blade, you spot glyphs in the fuller with numbers beside them. A suggestion of smithing, eternal, yet purpose particular to a time and place. The steel is so vibrant it seems to have been fashioned by the light of the stars themselves. Unfortunately, there is no handle for it. The magnificence of the blade suggests it is not to be accommodated by any mere hilt. Putting the blade in inventory, you tell the men to collect what they can from the beast of beasts and to get ready to leave this wretched place. We prevailed. Now, rip a bunch of lads. So, Great X on Sinrig. We need to decide what we're going to do with the company. Uh, let's just take a look at what we have left. Another Great X lad. Another Warhammer lad. Polarm lad, Alex Nestrov, oh, my man. Torturer, a torturer, so we can still go. Hammer, torture, torturer, but looks like we've got three axe boys, so we'll go like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hammers on the flanks, great axes, two torturers, a great axe, that looks fine for a formation. Komen. We'll take over again as 
primary venomin. Some legendary sword. I think we need to go to the water mill to get the uh, what's it? The cross guard for it, and then we make the sword. Now I think I'm not going to reload because I'm hoping that I now have all the crafting materials I need to make the potion of forgetfulness, so we can relevel Pumilus, which means he could be a pretty sick sword master. He doesn't have much in the way of melee defense, but we could. Why don't we make him? Let's see what the sword is. He's certainly going to be a sword specialist. Lightning sword. Oh, it gives chain lightning. Oh, awesome. So maybe we make him a sword duelist. Or just a shield using sword. Mm. I lost sweet head. What do you mean sweet head? The head armor. I think you mean the, the head armor. Uh, so who are two best archers? Obviously Horst. Onimaru or Seimon? Probably Onimaru. So this lad have to take on the... Black Monolith now, but these archers are going to be no good for the Black Monolith. Got some thinking to do. I've got to think about whether I'm going to go... Oh, no, there's no way I'm going to offline grind. I think what we'll do is we'll attempt the Black Monolith with this team setup, and we'll just accept the outcome. What I might do is actually switch up the formation a bit like this. We'll hold it back like that, and then we'll go Great Axes. So the flanks will take quite a lot of overwhelming in this setup. Oh yeah, we lost our Emperor's head. Oh yeah, mmm, damn. Rip. That is a real shame, you're quite right. It's a real shame. Well, I wasn't... I mean, it was fine. I mean, you know, extra bit of armor. Well, it would be especially disappointing to feel that loss once we actually um, have the matching body armor. Right. Let's quickly go hand in this. Get the other, I want to get the the rest of the sword. Where do I have to go? Uh, not there. Hour and thirty-eight. I'll have to chop chop us up into multiple episodes. Uh, the weather autumn. Ball. I have my concerns whether this these twelve lads can actually take on the black monolith, but we're certainly going to try. The lads need a break. We should commemorate the loss of Levitzmir and Nixus, though. 910 days for Levitzmir. Devoured by a beast of beasts. Nixus Benjamin. 820 days we had him for. And for like a 1.2 kill death ratio, or 1.2 kill, uh, kill per battle ratio for a Benjamin is pretty good. Almost a 1.5 one 1 kill ratio for a Warhammer lad. Oh, some die wolves, bless. Bless their little hearts. I think that's almost everything. I just need to do black monolith and I've done everything. And I need to camp out into the world, into the wilderness that is, to get Dovkul's event to pop. The blade of the reproach of the old gods vibrates and hums. You hold it forward in both hands, the steel wobbling ever so slightly on your fingers. Smiling once more, the elder nods and turns his hand to the hanging hilt. It lifts up of its holder and floats across the room to your hands. There it turns aside and melds with the steel, becoming whole with a flash of orange and blue. It is one of the most incredible blades you've ever seen with glyphs of moons and stars flaring along the fuller. When you look up... <coughs> Excuse me. You can see through the Elder's chest as he steadily fades away. My son has been avenged. His spirit can rest, and now so can mine. You watch as the finished sword lifts into the air and rotates with steel pointed down. A cupboard bursts open and strips of leather fly out and clasp shots of bindings that draw together the complete sheath. I'll take it. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
The reproach of the old gods then falls and you reach to catch it. But the ghostly hand steals it away. Oh, for fuck's sake. Ugh. You look up to see the elder unsheathing the blade, revealing its fire and ice as though, the bro as though he brokered a new day and gloomy night in the very spectrum of its steel. He chokes with laughter. Avenge, my son. Be worthy, idle doings for simpletons. You did well to chase the carrot cell sword, and for that I will kill you quick. Pauldrons and braces and a chest plate rise out of the mill well. Sheets of grain steaming off them to reveal their garish shapes, and the metals twist and float to the elder, fiercely striking his body as though they meant to armor the very anvil that helped craft them. The suit of steel comes together as its occupant croaks with laughter. Hands grab you by your shoulders and drag you out of the house. You are shielded by the damage incorporated. The elder Geist turns his head. So that's what you guys are talking about. A mob of morons, is it? Depart, the lot of you, and you shall be spared. I only ask that you leave me, the captain, as I have already promised his demise. Lex Nesterov draws his weapon and the rest of the company follows suit. The elder holds up the crepuscular sword in return. Though the steel is firmly real, the elder's body is rippling to and fro like a thinly veiled curtain on a moonlit night. He sighs and parts of blue ether drift from his lips. He turns the blade, its edge faces you. So be it. A few fallen heroes, a rachgeist, and many fallen betrayers. Oof. Okay, so this has been an hour and 42 minutes. So I can't do this now, I'm too tired. <sighs> We did the Kraken though, so we've got to do the Rachgeist and then the Black Monolith. Thanks for watching.